You can't talk about the history of the country music we love without mentioning bluegrass. That's right, bluegrass music with its haunting melodies, great storytelling, and the most incredible musicianship you've ever heard. It's not only one of the most respected styles of music of the past, but it's also incredibly popular in today's hit songs. Without bluegrass, country music simply wouldn't be what it is today. And when you gather together some of the most respected pickers and singers in the bluegrass world and have them sit a spell and share stories and songs, well, <laughs> that sounds like a slice of heaven to me. Hosted by bluegrass legend Ricky Skaggs and Opry star Bill Anderson, this amazing gathering is unlike anything you've ever seen before or ever will again. Because the bluegrass legends of yesterday, gathering with some of the stars of today doesn't happen very often. Quite simply, this is a once in a lifetime get together of bluegrass greatness. We hope you enjoy it. Welcome to Simply Bluegrass. I got it figured out that if Buck White plays the piano, then the Whites are a country band. <laughs> he picks up the mandolin, you become a bluegrass band. Is that that's, that's kind of the way you enough. do it? <laughs> and then you add Jerry Douglas the and Ricky Skaggs. The bass Cash. makes a little bit of the difference, too. Tone. However, sometimes... You, you play the electric uh, bass on most of the country uh, stuff, sure? Most of the time at the Opry, I do. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are no strangers to country's family reunion, and it's great to have you here on the Simply Bluegrass portion. The Whites. Yeah. Yeah. warm and tender kiss in an early morning mist while the fog hangs on the cane good morning country rain good morning country rain good to be back home again magic that I can't explain Often sat for hours just watching rain fall on the flowers. Oh, I hope I never change. Good morning, country rain. Good morning, country rain. Good to be back home again. Magic that I can't explain. In a good old country rain Many times I think of you And all the changes I've gone through Rain. Good to be back home again. Magic that I can't explain in a good old country rain. Good morning, country rain. It's good to be back home again. Magic that I can't explain in a good old country rain. Whites and Ricky and Jerry. Uh, that's great. Sharon was telling me that song was written by a great bluegrass writer named Eddie Raven. 
<laughs> Mac yeah. Wiseman, yeah. it's worth the price of admission just to sit here and talk oh, to you, and nice. now I'm getting ready to listen to you sing. You were telling me during the break that you've just cut a new record with Merle Haggard? Sure did. And what I'm going to sing is one of the songs that's on the, uh, the CD, yeah. Did he make you record all of his old songs? No, when he called <laughs> me about it, I thought he'd want to do that, and I was in favor of it because I love his songs. But he asked me to do six of mine and six, seven of his, yeah. Wow. Did you go out to California to do this or no, come no. here? No, did it right here in town, down on 16th, yeah. 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 You've recorded with some very unique, different types of people. You cut that record with John Prine, which was so right. good. And, and now with Merle, who, uh, name some other people you've Well, recorded. I did an album, a gospel album with, Char with Charlie Daniels, too. That's right. Yeah. And uh, oh, cut a song with Woody Herman one time. <laughs> My Blue Heaven, <laughs> and uh, just a, a couple of, did an old thing called uh, Stepping Up and Go on the West Coast and uh, had a couple of great jazz guitar players playing acoustical double guitars, Barney Kessel and uh, can't think of the other one's name now. Goodness. There goes breakfast. <laughs> 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 People probably don't know. Did are, does everybody here aware that Mac used to run a record company? He was the oh, yeah, head of the oh, yeah. country division of Dot Records. Yeah, right, yeah. Right. back in the late fifties, yeah. I know, out in right California. There on Sunset and Vine. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've done it all. Well, done quite a bit. Yeah. But I tell you what, <laughs> tell, tell me the name of the of your book. What's it going to be called? Well, we don't have a name for it yet. I think it might be something like. Uh, all is fit to print or something like that. <laughs> You're in for a Big Mac. So it's going to start from your very childhood? One day I was right born up. right up, yeah, and I went up to the valley and uh, got a cameraman. We went around the, the little old house where I was born is just to hold the hillside now, but uh, the cistern's still there. <laughs> mm. Should any of us in this room be worried about anything you wrote in the book? No, no. <laughs> You sure? <laughs> I've got one behind the counter I'm coming out with, though. <laughs> <laughs> you got you a pretty good guitar picker sitting next to well, you over he's, here. he's learning. <laughs> <laughs> he works cheap. <laughs> I have to tell you, was the while when I first came here to Nashville, the Opry, uh, he was running around in diapers. That's, that kind of tags his age, you know. <laughs> But he's a goodie now. We we got several little things cooking, you know. Well, of course he's got the the pedigree in his blood. Oh yeah, oh, with yeah. his dad Don Reno, yeah, great right. banjo player, and right. Reno and Smiley for many many years. What was it like, Ronnie? We we'll talk more when you're gonna sing. But just just growing up around it, of course, I don't guess you knew it any different. You probably thought everybody's daddy was on television, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, you know, you don't think about it when you're growing up and you're young. Um, I, I do remember uh, traveling with Dad and Red, and my, my thoughts was uh, what a beautiful mandolin I had, you know. I was proud of that because it, it looked new and it was old, and so, uh, but I had no earthly idea what what was going on. I just, I didn't know where they got the songs. I just heard, it, heard them sing them a lot, and I just figured, uh, I didn't know, but uh, everybody liked them, and uh, it was... Uh, it was a wonderful uh, time. I, I know Sam Bush and I talked about it many years ago, what a great time it was when we grew up and got into this business of, of uh, traditional bluegrass music. So it was just wonderful times, and they're, they're great memories. And, of course, like Max said, I've been knowing Max since I was a baby running around in diapers. And yeah. so I've been knowing you for quite a while, too, I might add. Don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm proud to have known you, and I loved your dad and loved that, well, whole, thank you. that whole group. I spent a lot of time around Roanoke back in those days. I know you did. We were together many times. I know you did. Hit some chords and let Mac uh, turn loose and sing us a few songs. What? <laughs> Uh, we're going to, uh, Mac's going to do one of his, actually. This is on the, uh, the new CD. I, in fact, I had the pleasure, privilege and pleasure of uh, producing this on uh, Mac and Merle. Oh, wow. And so it was, it's a wonderful project. And uh, I do have to tell one on Merle since he's not here. He <laughs> called me up the other day and he said, uh, he loves bluegrass, by the way. That's, that's one of his favorite uh, uh, musics. And he called me up and he said, Ronnie, he said, now you know, he said it. It's legal for you to throw a banjo capo up on your dash and you can park in handicapped parking. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> this, this guy was going through customs in London. 
<laughs> and they, uh, the, the customs guy had him open a, this banjo case. And when he opened it, there was two submachine guns in it. The guy just waved him on and said, I thought for a minute you had a banjo. <laughs> Can we talk you into singing? Yeah, I'll, I'll be glad to. We'll, we'll get Adam to kick it off. I'll deck my brow with roses, the love of baby there. The gems that others. Gave me will shine within my hair, and even those who know me will think my heart is light. My heart may break tomorrow, but I'll be all smile. upon him as though he were a charm once he smiled upon her and once he smiled on me they knew not what I suffered but they saw no change in me
I know everybody in this room will agree with me when I say that gospel music and bluegrass music have always been very closely intertwined, and I want to get a lot of comments about that, but I thought first maybe we'd turn this young lady loose up here with one of those bluegrass gospel songs, Sierra Hull. She's 22 years old. Oh, Thank my you. Lord. <laughs> Honey, when I was your age, I was 40. <laughs> I feel like it already. <laughs> <laughs> you got you some pretty good help up here. You got yeah. uh, Ricky Skaggs and Best you can find on such short notice. <laughs> I'll, I'll take what I can get, you know. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think you got pretty good. Well, I grew up listening to a lot of gospel music, like you said, and uh, some of my earliest memories are listening to Mr. Dual Lawson back there with my family, who's, you know, some of the very best bluegrass gospel out there, but uh, also listening to a lot of Ricky and Sharon and the Whites and, and of course, Ricky's band. And this next song, they, they told me to choose a song maybe um, that influenced me growing up. And, of course, I used to sing a bunch in church, so this is one that Ricky recorded many years ago that I used to sing when I was itty-bitty, one called The River of Jordan. <laughs> Jordan, our Savior went one day, and we read that John the Baptist met him there. When John baptized Jesus in Jordan's rushing water, the mighty power of God filled the air. I'm on my way to the river of Jordan, gonna wait right in, in the rushing water. I'm going down, I'm going down to the river of Jordan. King Naaman was stricken with dreaded leprosy, and he sent for the man of God to pray. But Elisha said to Naaman, Go dip yourself in Jordan and let the cool wash your spots away so we went right down to the river of jordan he went right in in the rushing water he dipped himself he dipped himself in the river of jordan and the cool waters made him whole We'll be right back. We got a couple of guys here that have just won I guess every award that they oh, they give from so the International guys. Bluegrass yeah. Music Association, and uh, glad to have you guys here. Thank you. And from up in the northeastern part of the country, they're they're not from down here like uh, most all of us are. Say hello to the Gibson brothers. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what, are you in Maine? Is that where you are? New York. No, we live in uh, northern New York. I have to say. Northern New York for the folks back home because they get mad if I say upstate New York. Yeah, it's, yeah. we're so far north. We're from uh, two miles from the Canadian border. We grew up on a dairy farm up there. 
Allenburg you, Depot, you, New York. Are you Malone? Are you close yeah, to Malone? Yeah, Malone? close to it. Yeah. I live 11 miles from Malone. Yeah. They used to have a big country fair every year in Malone. I bet a lot of people they still probably, do. probably played there. You're right up, yeah, right up by the Canadian border. I remember one time I played the fair in, in Malone, New York, and instead of paying me, the promoter gave me a snowmobile. <laughs> What are you going to do with a snowmobile in Nashville? <laughs> Put some wheels on it. Yeah. <laughs> Make a, a, a our, four-wheeler our out of it or something. How about getting, getting some music out of the Gibson yeah, sure. boys? Yeah. Yeah. Just been be so successful. Yeah. Yeah. To work. Now, Ricky, do you, like, when people are from, you know, a different place, you know, do you guys meet up on the road? Do you do shows together? It, well, we'd love to. They got so dang big here so quick that they just moved right on. Yeah. Now, uh, we love, I love what the guys are singing. I, they, they write most all of their songs, and yeah, uh, pretty song. much 90%, 99% probably of all their songs, they write them. And uh, that's one of the things that uh, about oh, six years ago, seven years ago, uh, I heard them for the first time and, and just was so so taken by their songwriting, you know. And of course their harmony singing and, and all was great, but uh, they're really great, great writers. And they, they write songs that really work well in this music, you know, and, and I think that's, that's really one of the signs that this music's really gonna live is that, you know, that, that people are writing new songs in it. Any kind of genre has to have new, you know, new music coming into it all the time to sustain. You can't just uh, go over and, you know, re redo Uncle Pen, you know, and, and uh, although I have. Uh, <laughs> Looks like somebody did that. Yeah, and Mr. <laughs> Mr. Munro uh, came up to me at the Opry one night, and he said, uh, Ricky, uh, I got a check from Uncle Pen from that song you cut, and boy, it was a powerful check. <laughs> it just gone number one, you know, a couple of weeks before, and he, and he said, you can record all my songs if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was kind of that way when Elvis oh, got yeah. Blue Moon of Kentucky. If it'll he? help you, that's what he told it. He said, I told Elvis, if it'll help you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, I think it ended up helping yeah, really the Is this something yeah. you guys wrote? No. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> well, that's the way to Well, that's the 1%. Oil oil I said 99. This, is, I, this, song, this song we're going to do is written by Sean Camp and Loretta Lynn. And oh, it's, uh, two great songs. We just recorded it for our latest release, and uh, no, it's not something we wrote. <laughs> <about. That's laughs> Sorry, Ricky. That's all right. Yeah, that's the one percent. I like it. <laughs> got me down Well I guess when it rains it pours I'm dying for someone to live for There's a whippoorwill out on a limb But I know I'm more lonesome than him and I don't Tide coming in on the show. I'm dying for someone to live for. Every time. 
goodbye I hear the tide come in and on the shore And I'm dying for someone to live Gibson Brothers, wow, Bill, that's, that's powerful. So you know what I'm thinking about? I, I hadn't thought about it until today, but uh, what they're doing is, is really br bringing back or, or calling back to the days even before Munn and, and the, the, you know, the bluegrass band that, that he put together. I mean, mm -hmm. the brother duets and the duet mm -hmm. bands right. were, were, popular were the foundation. Long, long yes. before that, yeah, that's right. The Monroe Brothers, Blue Sky Boys. Yeah. Del the Maynard. Del, uh -huh. It's so old, it's new again, yes. and it's so ref it's like a breath of fresh air, oh, guys. It, is. it oh, really you. is. That's just oh. absolutely. And they put on terrific. an awesome show. Yeah, they did. We we worked with them this summer, and uh, we could sure understand why they win the awards because the, they get the crowd right in the palm of their hand. They're so entertaining, and it's a real variety of uh, the kind of songs they do. We were just knocked out by you. Well, we've been summer. knocked out by you for. Wild. Everybody in this room. We're and, real uh, old. Yeah. No, no, I'm not, I'm not been knocking, that, but, knocking a long but time. But it's, uh, it's, it's, you, you got real good early. <laughs> but it, it's well, did you guys just grow up with it? I mean, you think upstate New York, you don't no. think that is a hotbed of you, you know, bluegrass there's, music? there's a lot of fans of country music up there, and, and my dad was a dairy farmer, and for generations, that's, that's what the Gibsons did. We we're just farmers, and, uh, just by chance, you know, my father tried to learn to play fiddle and banjo and guitar and, and couldn't because he was just busy. And there's a college student giving lessons when we were like 11 and 12. And because the, uh, one of the instruments that the college student could play was banjo, he decided to teach Eric from the Scruggs book. And that, you awesome. know, getting Fly and Scruggs uh, at Carnegie Hall into Eric's hands when he was 12 or 13 just made it what we thought we wanted to do, you know. We had some records around the house. We, the first bluegrass record we had around the house yeah, I remember was that. Mac Wiseman and Lester Flatt, the one where you're looking through the... Uh, yeah. Through, yep. uh, yeah. Uh, Lester uh, and Mac, yeah. Picture frame. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I That's think it was called Over the Hills of the Poor House. And Ricky, you were on all over the radio at that yeah. time. That was a big, a big part of... And the Whites, you know. And the Whites, yeah. yeah. It was yeah. a They're good the time only to grow ones up that again. aren't cold today. Do it, Jerry. <laughs> they're the only ones that aren't cold today. <laughs> Those ones that aren't cold today. Yeah. 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 Just, it's nice outside to them. <laughs> you also bring up another thing that kind of is an outsider of the bluegrass community. I, I respect. Bluegrass people respect their audiences in the way that they dress. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying everybody has to wear a coat and tie or or a rhinestone suit or whatever, but but I think it's a certain amount of respect for your audience, and uh, you you guys you look the part too. No, thank you. On yeah. the Eddie Stubb scale, they would get an A plus. <laughs> a plus. I still owe Lee for this tie because I didn't buy it. No, <laughs> yeah. he bought the ties. We're wearing these ties yeah. tomorrow, and I owe you a little bit. Yeah, you do. Well, I think before this visit's thing. over, we're gonna hear some memory. I want to hear one of the things that you wrote. He bragged all about your writing, and you got, got another to. song. Yeah, you got right. to. What a great song. <laughs> oh, thanks. That's right. Let's get some music. How about Daly and Vincent? Y'all haven't sung today. Sure. Well, we're like Dale. We're nervous because, uh, you know, they ask us when we come out here, you know, sing a song from someone that influenced you. Well, the Osborne Brothers influenced us. I mean, along with all of you basically sitting in this room, but we thought, well, We'll do it, and I feel stupid singing it in front of Bobby Osborne, but it's kind of our salute and tribute to him. And Don't feel bad. I do it all the time. Am I clear? Am I clear? Where are you from, Ralph? McClure, Virginia. <laughs> Lord. Is that what Raph? You've, you've heard Raph do that? Is that what? Yeah, Raph said. Hey, McClure! <coughs> Where are you from, Ralph? <laughs> McClure, Virginia. <laughs> McClure. All right, let's see if we know this thing. <laughs> Oh, 
the Brambles took the cabin I was born in. And the bride reclaimed the fields I used to plow. In my heart, there's a yearning to be going to that 40 acre patch got sold in Sprout. Arkansas. Did, did y'all record that first, or did Teddy and Doyle record it first? I think Teddy and Doyle uh, did. Teddy and Doyle yeah. recorded it first. They were, yeah, they did. And a boy named Damon Black from Arkansas. Yeah, man. Yeah. You yeah. bad. Wrote, wrote the song. You bad. Yeah, but, of course, y'all had a great record on it, you and Sonny and the group. And uh, Bill, I yeah. believe they've heard that. I love that song. I'm proud to say that I was on the record it. with Bobby and Sonny. I was actually doing the third part with them. Oh, did, I sing the part, right? did I sing your part? You were Claire. <laughs> was, was it Claire? We should have got great. should have got him to sing that with you. No, that would have been that great. Crap. That would have yeah, yeah, that would have been so cool. No, that was That's good. One of my most favorite records that uh, Bobby yeah. and Sonny and I recorded was Arkansas. Yeah. The blend was really nice. Yeah. You know, one of the one of the things I like the best about the Osborne Brothers is how they could take songs like that that may have been done by others and make them into their own. Yeah. And they did that with Arkansas because I, I, I must have heard Teddy and Doyle sing that song on the Opry a thousand times. But your version, when you guys do it, it's like it's a completely different song because yeah. it belongs to you. And you did the yeah. same thing with another one of their Roll songs, Muddy Roll River. Muddy River. Yeah. 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 Same yeah. thing. Yeah. They did Roll Muddy River. That's, that's where, I got the, where I got the idea of, with Rocky Top. Is they did Roll Muddy River. And we got a whole Roll, Roll Muddy River. They sang it. They sang it fast and played it slow. Uh -huh. We just reversed it and, and sang it slow and played it fast. Yeah. yeah. And that yeah. made it, boy, that made it into a different, yeah. that made that into our song. Really. Yeah. And so first time I ever heard Rocky Top, Boodle O'Brien went over to his house. I, son of me went over there and and uh, he had, had written about half of it. And he was sitting there singing it with a guitar. Rocky Top, da, 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 da. I thought, boy. That ain't no part of nothing right there. <laughs> <laughs> I thought wrote about Road Money, what we did at Road Money River. I said, we do that with Rocky Top. That'd make a good, that'd make a good song. Mm -hmm. So when we got Boodle, he didn't have it finished. We were going to record the next day. And I said, if you get that finished yet, we might could do it tomorrow. He said, yeah. So he finished it. And we, and when he got the words to it, we got all the lyrics to it. Well, we got, we got together that, that night and run over it My fast goodness. like that. So we went to the studio the next day and, and recorded it. Wow. wow. We put, That's what's we, amazing. Speed, we sang it slow and played it fast. Yeah. So, uh, we, we played that song in front of 110,000 people at uh, Nayland Stadium with Jay Julian and the, and the, and the band, and the UT band, marching band. Oh, okay, and, the, yeah. and the ground was, uh, 
when when they hit that banjo, of course they went nuts <laughs> when oh, they yeah. hit the banjo. But of course, and the ground started shaking. Oh. It was it was it was they were they were jumping, and I I never felt anything like that in my life. It you was amazing. You went the first time over there. That was that was uh, I believe that was Bear Bryant's last game at Nathan Stadium. Oh, it could could. And uh, we beat them that day. Sorry. Alabama. <laughs> but, but, we, but we did. Just we had to go sorry. back and do the Opry that yeah, night, we so we left yeah. at halftime and listened to it going down the road. I went over again two years ago and did that. That's right, you did. Did it again, that. you know. Yeah. And uh, Dr. Julian, uh, who's retired now, um, he came down there that day, and uh, Dr. Julian and uh, T. Tommy Cotter was uh, state senator at that time. And uh, Boodle and Felice Bryant, all of them was together. They they put up uh, uh, a bid to get Rocky Top to become the new state song, and uh, it got to the point where uh, it was getting close. So uh, they were going to have the vote. So they invited us to come over to uh, to uh, uh, Nashville and and uh, go. Watch the voting take place for for Rocky Top to become the state song, and we got to watch it. Sit down there where the guy to, makes the laws. Why put that cat hammer and hit? We stand there. And all all counties in Tennessee voted yes, except one county. Uh oh, <laughs> and that was Shelby County. Uh oh, they voted against it because it had the word moonshine in it. But that didn't stop. The, the majority yeah. won there, so yeah. it became the state song that night. That's awesome. Wow. And so, well, I read in the paper this week where a little town in East Tennessee called Lake City, Tennessee, uh -huh. it, they've got a petition up over there to change the name of Lake City and name it Rocky Top, Tennessee, oh. so there actually will be a Rocky Top, yeah. Tennessee. You'll be getting another call yeah. soon. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby, everybody's been doing your songs. How about one from you? Yeah, yeah Bobby. Yeah. Three of his harmony singers here today. That's yeah, pretty bizarre. Ronnie, Paul, and <laughs> Terry Eldridge all were and harmony Smitty singers. Yeah. That makes four. Smitty. Smitty too. <laughs> Sonny used to get me all the time. He's taller than me, and and we when we would record, why well, the mic was up here, and I'd have to stand right straight up and sing like that, and I've. <laughs> I told Owen Bradley one time, I said, that, I need something to stand on before I'm tall as he is, you know, singing on one mic. And Owen went and got a box out of a closet and had the box is about that high. I stood on that box and, and recorded <laughs> <laughs> So I'd be part of the rest of it. <laughs> so, uh, this, uh, it's a beautiful song here we recorded once upon a time. And, uh, Eddie Stubbs, about every time he plays this one up there on the WSM on his show, uh, when it gets finished, he asks, is, is there any questions? Yeah, that's right. So, <laughs> that's right. Uh, but it's, uh, I want to thank um, Terry Eldridge and Terry Smith. We, we, had them, we had them nicknamed once the two terrible Terrys, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we want to thank uh, you, Chief. Yeah. Well, uh, let's do uh, Pathway Teardrops. Okay. Isn't it? <laughs>
room full of love and respect right there, pal. That's terrific. Y'all, and, and the two Terrys uh, sound just as good as you ever did with him. That is terrific. Bobby, you can't leave. This is not on the program. It is not scheduled. The band hasn't rehearsed it. But we got to have a little bit of our state song yeah. while you're up yeah. here. <laughs> Play fast and sing slow. <laughs> <laughs> Beep. <laughs>